I'm Billy Fillmore. I make intentionally creepy stuff. I really like to take the things that I don't like about society or the things that I've experienced and I try to uh, replicate that in 3D materials. In the end, it's all about trying to make work that makes people stop and wonder why the hell would anyone make that. When I was a kid, I was terrified of my closet, and I didn't know why. In fact, my parents have these really funny pictures of me sleeping in the hallway, or I would go to Mike's room, my brother's room, and I'd sleep with him. And then eventually, uh, my brother was so tired of me coming and waking him up and sleeping with him that they put a lock on his door, and then they have a picture of me sleeping in front of his door because I was so terrified of sleeping in my room. It took a while of remembering this that I remember looking into the closet and seeing the void, and I was so afraid of the possibilities of what could be inside of there. And so I was so afraid of that closet, and I think my aesthetic and my taste kind of built around that terror, that now I feel like I am no longer afraid of the closet, but now I've become the thing in the closet. Just Put Him Back is a, <laughs> it relates to my birth story. So uh, I'm, I was, um, an in vitro baby, uh, and this is in 1980, and an in vitro baby cost $10,000. Uh, and so my dad never let me forget how much I cost. And during my, my, <laughs> the time of my birth, it was just a very traumatic event. I guess there was at some points they, told, they asked my mom, you have to choose between yourself and the baby. So I was finally birthed, and uh, <laughs> The way, I was, the way it's told to me is the umbilical cord wrapped around my belly, and so I was covered in green <laughs> And none of my hair follicles had uh, been like sloughed off, which is normal. All of your hair follicles grow when you're born, but some babies are born with all their ha hair follicles still intact. So from head to toe, I was covered in orange hair and green <laughs> I was so gross that uh, my mom's first words to me was like, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen, just put him back. So I think that that is one of those perfect kind of stories where my artwork comes from, where it's, it's beautiful on one hand and how much trauma and suffering had to occur, but then it's really funny on the other hand that you went all, through all this trouble and you just get a red-haired, green covered baby. There's nothing, I get along with, I love my parents, mom, dad, I love you. Uh, and we get along great. But they were kind of the first um, institutional rule setters for me, and I never understood why. I got a bachelor's degree in business administration, uh, and there's nothing worse than graduating with a degree uh, that you didn't actually want. The day after I graduated, I uh, went to my first visiting artist lecture, and the artist's was, name was Justin Sweet, who was a concept artist. And uh, I'd never seen anybody make the stuff that I was consuming, so he made a lot of concept art for um, like the Chronicles of Narnia, Lord of the Rings, some video games that I had played, comic books, and it just kind of blew my mind. And uh, after that, at the next semester, I just started going back to art school. There's two parts of me that I always am questioning. One is my 13-year-old self, who um, was in the middle of puberty and being punished for being different or not understanding the rules. And the other part of me that I like to listen to is my deathbed self. So the, I'm imagining myself in my 90s or hopefully like later than that, uh, in a hospital bed trying to look back on my life and hoping that what I did was worthwhile. So between those two parts of my personality, uh, I find myself trying to make work that appeals to both of them. So I, I work here at uh, Russell Sage College on New Scotland, and right now I live like a mile and a half away. Uh, and I always walk. And when I'm walking, uh, I'm, I'm not looking for stuff, but stuff seems to find me. So I walk by a church that's down on New Scotland, and in the grass was this doll that definitely looks like it survived a fire or something like that. But its, uh, its porcelain head is still intact, and I saw its mangled body, and I was just like, that is the ugliest thing 
I've ever seen, like I was to my mom. Uh, I pick it up and its eyes are closed. When I pick it up, its eyes open. And its eyes are just terrible looking because they survived the fire, but it's just the weirdest, creepiest thing ever. So when I brought it back, I didn't want it to just sit it on a shelf, so I ended up making a box for it. And in my mind, I was imagining, what would my grandma, the grandmother who said I was the cutest thing she'd ever seen, uh, what kind of box would she like to see it in? And so I, I went to Joanne's and found it like the, the, the prettiest, nicest fabric. So the tension between a traditional doll that's been mutilated, not by me, just found it, uh, and then putting it in a curio cabinet box as if it's some kind of precious object was just really fun. I, I like affecting other people, but I, the, the main audience for me is me. Uh, and those two characters I talked about, like my, my 13 year old self and my ancient deathbed persona. By paying attention to those two, what it's really doing is making sure that I'm not being depressed about what I made and I'm not anxious about what I could make. Uh, and it's always kind of pushing me to make the best work that I can make now.